Now, I believe still on the telephone with us is Colonel Mark Brown, who flew the shuttle Columbia some years ago. If you're still with us there in Dayton, Ohio, uh, Colonel Brown, did you see this new video? Yes, I did. Can you put it in context for us? Uh, well, that's a uh, tall order to start with. The perspective that we have here is very much the same as NASA and everybody else does, um, trying to understand exactly what this chain of events is. In one of the views, it appears that a large white panel is tumbling behind the orbiter, and then some seconds after that, there's a plume that would indicate either the ignition of some kind of fluid on the vehicle or an explosion, and then the breakup follows that. Just like NASA, um, we'll all be looking at these different views, I'm sure, for the next number of days, trying to put together in our own minds what that exact sequence of events is. And Colonel Brown, what do you make of the early reports? And we've confirmed these reports that in the very early stages, just, you know, happening today, that uh, the NASA experts, the engineers and others, sort of concentrating for the moment on, on the left wing of, of the space capsule. Well, well, I shouldn't call it a space capsule uh, of, of the spacecraft. Right. Um, two things. First of all, we need to keep in mind that all the data has been impounded by NASA, and for good reason. So where they may know a lot more than we do, we're relegated to being in a speculation mode. Um, secondly, they're, they literally are going through exactly the same process, trying to match the system's telemetry and the behavior of the vehicle with the visual information they're getting from all the different video that's being collected by professionals and amateurs around the country. And ultimately, they will try to piece that together with the structural evidence, physical evidence that's on the ground to find out absolutely what the cause of the accident was. Also, I guess I would like to give a great tribute to a lot of the eyewitness accounts that we have had so far. There have been some reports of people who have said they heard explosions in the sky. Um, we now know that, of course, it is quite normal for the shuttle to make a double sonic boom when it passes overhead. The eyewitnesses that reported hearing multiple independent sonic booms, of course, is quite correct. Uh, the vehicle at the time that appears to have broken up was going somewhere in the neighborhood of Mach 15, Mach 18, depending on timing here. And it would indeed cause multiple sonic booms. And the sonic boom is from the speed of the individual pieces of debris moving through the atmosphere and not the sound of an explosion occurring up at that altitude. Uh, secondly, uh, this cannot be emphasized enough, anybody that sees any debris coming down and landing should not touch it. They should uh, obviously clearly mark it and notify the authorities so that can be dealt with in a professional way. A lot of the chemicals on the orbiter are very toxic and uh, certainly are a threat to life if handled improperly. Dr. Brown, we appreciate your insight. It's extremely valuable to us, and I, I appreciate you being with us today. We're going to switch quickly to Bob Orr, our CBS News aviation uh, coverage man in Washington, who has some new information. Bob? Dan, first, I just want to make a quick comment about that video we just saw. Very early in that sequence, we see something that could be very, very telling, and you touched on it there when you were talking to the commander. A large piece, or it appears to be a large piece, separates before we see the first sign of any kind of explosion or fire. That could be significant because if we're talking about a structural failure, some kind of big structural breakup of the uh, Columbia spacecraft, that could be uh, indicated here by right there. We see something that starts to come off right there. And as we see, that's followed then by uh, other obvious fire and explosion type pictures. But that could catch the sun as it comes down that large piece if it's a big flat surface and could give the image of it being on fire. So we don't want to go too far out here, but that could be, and I emphasize could be, a sign of some type of breakup. Bill Harwood says, uh, as we've reported, that sources tell him that the telemetry data stream, that is the real-time information coming from Columbia, may indicate there was a problem in that left wing. A senior administration official told me a short time ago, he would not confirm that report, but he did say a short time ago that they are investigating a, quote, systems failure. Uh, I don't know what systems failure means, but obviously that could be code for some type of major mechanical problem. Beyond that, the administration's made a curious choice here 
in asking or directing rather FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, to head the investigation. Uh, the early idea was NASA would probably do that in cooperation with the NTSB, but now FEMA, the folks that normally respond to hurricanes, tornadoes, natural disasters, will be the lead agency. And beyond that, we're told that NORTHCOM, that's the new military command, will be there to assist. And a cavalry division from Fort Hood is going to be dispatched to help with search and rescue and to help secure debris fields. It's a huge challenge because as the radar data has shown and as these video images have shown, uh, what is left of Columbia is probably scattered over several hundred square miles. This, uh, in effect, uh, if it were a crime, would be a crime scene. It is an investigation scene. And all of this could be critically important to figuring out what exactly went wrong. First responders are out right now trying to secure the evidence best they can. They apparently will get some help from the Army as FEMA moves forward to try to put all of this back together. Dan? Above all, one wouldn't want to make too much of this, but uh, it's going to strike a lot of people as passing well strange that FEMA, of all the government agencies, which is uh, as good as it can be and has been, is not noted to having physicists and uh, engineers and aeronautical experts. Uh, FEMA, why FEMA? Well, I think, and this is my opinion, that this is a uh, first run for the Homeland Security. I'm sorry, Dan, I'm getting a little uh, echo there. I believe that this is the first run out of the box for the new Homeland Security Department in an attempt to mount a coordinated response. Now, while FEMA will be at the uh, point of the spear, so to speak, right behind FEMA will be all of the technical expertise of NASA and from the NTSB. So I think the folks at FEMA so used to uh, responding to natural disasters, we had all the technical assistance uh, they need. But this is a message, and I think we shouldn't mistake it, uh, from the Bush administration that this will be a very centrally controlled investigation. The new Secretary of Homeland Security, Tom Ridge, will be directing it, and FEMA will be uh, his first responder. Dan? Bob Orr. We're going to bring you up to date on uh, what's happened as we pass the top of the hour for those of you who haven't been with us right the way through. But let's just say for the moment the headlines of the hour are the shuttle Columbia is gone, destroyed as it plunged to earth this morning uh, over North Texas. Uh, no survivors among the astronaut crew of seven. Cause unknown. An investigation has been launched.